Hi, Danny140 here from Regal Technologies, and today we will be continuing to build, debug, and analyze our remote control robot. Today we will be installing an ultrasonic sensor onto the robot, which will help prevent the robot from crashing. To do this, we need to understand how the ultrasonic sensor operates so that we can set a threshold to have it stop the robot. In order to understand how this ultrasonic sensor works, we first need to know how to power it and trigger the sensor so that we can perform testing on it. I know how much power the sensor needs based off the data sheet, and I know how to trigger it. The sensor itself needs a 5.6 volt power supply, and to trigger it, it needs to see a pulse at somewhere between 60 hertz and 40 megahertz. And in order to create the pulse, what I'm going to use, I'm going to use our waveform generator. So the first things first, I'm going to go into our pulse menu here. And then within here, I'm going to set our frequency, and I'm going to set this to be at 100 hertz, just because this will make it easier for us to view the signal later on on our oscilloscope. Next, I'm going to set the high level and low level, starting with the low level, to match a power supply, so 0 volts and 5.6 volts. And then next, I'm going to go down to the width here, and I'm going to set our width to be 500 microseconds. And once I've done that, I'm going to turn on our waveform generator. We can see the pulse that we're creating from our waveform generator on our oscilloscope here in yellow. And this is basically connected to the same trigger point for our sensor itself. We have here as our blue line the main power supply for our sensor itself. Then we have our waveform generator's trigger line, which is sending the pulse. And it's also connected to channel 1 on our oscilloscope in yellow. Then we have a common ground here, which has our power supply ground, our waveform generator ground, and our oscilloscope reference ground. And then finally, over here in orange, we have the response from the sensor itself, which will be displayed in blue for channel 2 on our oscilloscope. I'm going to turn that on now on our oscilloscope, and then turn off the side menu. And what we see here is we're getting an irregular response from the sensor, just because there's not anything in front of it for it to necessarily trigger on. So, as I say, put my hand out, we'll see a trigger response being sent, and then there's a slight delay before another pulse is created from the sensor itself, which is corresponding to where the object is, in this case my hand, is in association to the sensor. So as I go closer to the sensor, it gets a little narrower, and as I move farther apart, it'll get a little wider. So I want a robot to stop right about at 6 inches from the sensor, which has this width. And in order to get that, I'm going to go into our measurement menu, and then add, and then hit positive width. And what we'll see here is we have a pulse width on channel 2 as right around 690 microseconds, which is the distance I'm going to set in our robot as to when I would like it to stop. With the stop width now entered into the robot, we can now add the sensor to the robot, and then we'll be able to confirm the sensor's response. To test that the sensor is working correctly, we I will now attempt to drive the robot into a box itself, and as we can see, it's stopped so that we know the sensor is now operating correctly. 